Recently, I helped edit a short film which had a sort of worn videotape look. It seems like these days, everyone wants to be able to make this visual effect, but commercial plugins are expensive, and they don't actually look very realistic. I'm going to show you how to make this effect in After Effects with no plugins required. First, we need to understand how VHS tapes store images. Now, don't worry, I'll make this pretty simple. VHS splits an image into two parts, the luminance, or brightness, and chrominance, or color. To save tape, it squeezes the image horizontally, then, when displaying it, stretches it out again and recombines both channels to form the final image. The luminance channel is about half as wide as the original image, and since our eyes are much better at picking out small changes in brightness than small changes in color, the chrominance channel is just one sixteenth the width of the final image. Here's the footage we're going to be working with. Jerrica, there's something important I have to tell you. There's... there's someone else. It's Jem. We're the same person. Jem is my alter ego. But... but you have different hair. <laughs> You're outrageous. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. Thanks to Brianna Roseman for helping me with that little sketch. Uh, now we can go into After Effects. Create a new composition, which we'll call Luma. Set the frame rate to 29 and change frames per second. And for the full effect, our video should be at a resolution of 640 by 480, so this comp needs to be 320 by 480. It should technically be 333 by 480, but that gives us a little more work later on, and the final effect isn't that different, so you can just go with 320. Place your video in the timeline, and if necessary, scale it down to fit the frame. Since the source footage here is 1920 by 1080, we need to set the scale to 45%. Then click this icon here to unlink the horizontal and vertical scaling, and make the width half that of the height. It looks weird, but don't worry, we'll fix it soon enough. Now we need to make another composition, and we'll call this one Chroma. This time it should be 1 16th the width of our final video. That's 40 by 480. Place your footage in and scale it as before, but this time scale it horizontally by 1 16th. 45 divided by 16 is 2.8125. Now we make our main comp, which we'll call Output. It should of course be a full 640 by 480, and place Luma on the timeline. It should reach from top to bottom if you've done this correctly so far, but we'll need to widen it out. So unlink the scale here, and set the width to 200%. Next, place Chroma on the timeline above that, and make the width 1600%. To get the brightness detail of Luma, but still use the color information from Chroma, we're going to set the blend mode of Chroma to color. Now, if you don't see the blend modes, then you right-click over here, go to Columns, and check Modes. Now, at this point, we need to talk about sound. Since you have two copies of your video playing simultaneously, your sound is going to be twice as loud as it was in the original video. Always remember to mute one of the tracks here, or else your audio will be distorted. Or, if you're like me, you already have a doctored version of the soundtrack, so you should just mute both tracks and pull in the modified one. And now for the fun part. Now from this point forward, pretty much everything we do is to taste, so you don't have to worry quite so much about getting the numbers right at this point. Just go for the look that you want. Make an adjustment layer. And if you want to add something like color curves, this is the point where you would do it. First, we'll give it a fast box blur. Set the radius to around 1.2, and there should only be one iteration. Then, to bring back some of the sharpness that we just got rid of, let's put in an unsharp mask, and make the amount around 100 and the radius 4. Then add some grain. The defaults here look good enough, but we'll make it monochromatic. And finally, to get that nice, bad tracking look, give it a wave warp. 
make the type smooth noise, the height should be 1, maybe even less, and the width around 120. Make the direction 0 so it moves vertically, and a speed of 4 looks pretty good. And be sure the pinning is set to all edges or else you're going to get some nasty artifacts on here that just totally ruin the look. Now this last part is entirely optional. Most TVs cut off the bottom part of the screen, but on some screens you may notice a small jagged line at the bottom. Now we can simulate that right here by adding another adjustment layer. Then you right click on it and create a new mask. This strip takes up the bottom 80th of the frame, so 480 divided by 80 is 6. To get the top value, 480 minus 6 is 474. And we'll add 2 pixels to the bottom. This is because we're adding a feather so that the strip doesn't have a hard edge to it. Unlink the radius and set the vertical feathering to 2 pixels. Now in the effect controls we add a slant and set it to 200. Add 20 to the vertical floor which gives us 500. And then for some added distortion we can put in another blur. The radius can be around 2 with one iteration. And finally put in another wave warp with all the same settings as before but with a more extreme wave height. At least 4, but you could go up to about 15 if you want it to get really grody. And pin to the right edge. Now we can pull our output comp into Premiere and after rendering we get this. Jerrica, there's something important I have to tell you. There's, there's someone else. It's Jem. We're the same person. Jem is my alter ego. But, but you have different hair. <laughs> You're outrageous. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. So, I hope this has helped some of you lo-fi enthusiasts get the look you want. Hopefully you can at least use this as a starting point for your own digital approximation. Of course, feel free to add, change, or remove any steps. It's your video, so do what you think looks right.